Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Giving praise and honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, thanking him for his many, many blessings for all that he has done for all of us, his children. Amen. Amen. Give me thanks for him allowing us to rise this morning uh, to be able to see another day, rainy or sunshine. Any day that we can see, it is a blessing from the Lord that he has allowed us to see another day. Amen. Amen. I just want to encourage all of you, my people, God's people, uh, to stay faithful to the Lord and to stay strong. I know things are tough. I know the economy is tough. I know everything is going on, but it is my job as God's preacher and we as God's people to encourage one another to stay strong in the Lord, to not allow circumstances to deter us from what we are to the Lord. The Lord loves us and he will take care of us. Remember, everything belongs to him. Amen. 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 So I want to encourage you all. I know the pocketbooks are getting tight. You, know, you got to rob Peter to pay Paul. Amen. We are all tightening down. But I want y'all to understand this, uh, that God is able and willing and will be able to help you. The one thing you need today, we want to talk a little bit about it today, is faith. Faith in knowing that no matter how bad the situation, the Lord will step in and make it better. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you. May the Lord keep you is our prayer. We're not going to be before you long this afternoon. Uh, we're going to move along uh, and uh, read our opening scripture. Do our, I'm going to deal with just a couple of names on our prayer list. And we're going to go into the word of God. Amen, amen. There's uh, our opening scripture this afternoon um, will be coming out of the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first through the 13th verses. Amen. Uh, Hebrews 11, 1 through 13. And I'll be reading out of the Christian Standard Bible. Amen. Amen. If you have a different version of Bible, just read along as I read. Amen. That's the uh, Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first through the 13th verse. I'll be reading out of the. CSB, the Christian Standard Bible. That first verse begins by saying, Now faith is the reality of what is hoped for, the proof of what is not seen. For by it our ancestors won God's approval. By faith we understand that the universe was created by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was approved as a righteous man because God approved his gifts. And even though he is dead, he still speaks through his faith. Hmm. By faith, Enoch was taken away. And so he did not experience death. He was not to be found because God took him away. For before he was taken away, he was approved as one who pleased God. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God, since the one who draws near to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, after he was warned about what was not yet seen and motivated by godly fear, built an ark to deliver his family. By faith, he condemned the world and became an heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called, obeyed and set out for a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he stayed as a foreigner in the land of promise, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob co-heirs of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah herself, when she was unable to have children, received power to conceive offspring, even though she was past the age, since she considered that, one, that the one who had, pr had promised was faithful. Therefore, from one man, in fact, 
from one as good as dead came offspring as numerous as the stars of the sky and as, and as innumerable as the grains of sand along the seashore. These all died in faith, although they had not received the things that were promised, but they saw them from a distance, greeted them, and confessed that they were foreigners and temporary residents on the earth. I read for you here again um, the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first through uh, the 13th verses. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word for the edification of our souls. Amen, amen. Uh, going into our prayer list, uh, we're going to only mention a few names. Um, first name uh, I'm going to mention is the Merle family, uh, Mother Merle uh, in California, um, passed away recently in, uh, in the process. I'm not, I haven't heard much of her funeral, uh, of, of any funeral arrangements in California, but I know that the, uh, her family is bringing her back. Uh, to be buried next to her husband, Elda Merle. Amen. So let's pray for the St. Matthew Church family, um, that the Lord will give them strength, and the Merle family, that they, the Lord will give them strength as well as they deal with this great loss. Amen. Amen. I want to pray for the Mahar uh, family uh, in the loss of the father, uh, Mr. George Mahar. Uh, services were held yesterday. Um, at uh, St. Pius a Catholic Church in uh, California. Um, uh, it, is, um, it is imperative, it's hard when you lose a father, a grandfather, one who loved and one who cared, amen, amen. And Mr. Mahar was a very sweet and generous and great man, amen. A man who served not only his country, but he also served his community. He served in the Navy, then he served as a scout, became an Eagle Scout, amen, serving his community, but he also served his, church, his local church. He was involved in his local church, and the Lord, finally, after the Lord laid his wife to rest, the Lord now called him home to be at rest as well. So we want to pray uh, for the Maher family, Kathy, Mary, uh, Jim, and Michael, and the grandkids, and the great-grandkids. We want to pray for that whole family, as well as the Jindadi family, for they were also uh, God brothers and God sisters knitted together. Amen. Uh, because uh, it, it is it's hard to lose someone that you're very close to. And we want to keep them and uh, the St. Pius Church family in our prayers. Amen. Amen. And, as, and also the other names that are on the list that I have not mentioned. Let's pray for them. All the church families that we normally mention want to pray for all of them as well, for this is a trying time for God's people. No, we're not going through the persecution like they did in the Bible, but there is a persecution that is happening. And we, as God's people, must keep the faith and stand strong and continue to preach the message because there is a spiritual warfare going on. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father and our God, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this hour. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for your love, your grace, your patience, Lord God. We thank you for your son, Jesus, whose blood cleanses our soul, Lord God. Lord God, we, we thank you, Lord God, realizing you did not have to allow us to be here. You did not have to allow us to live. But it's because of your love, your grace, and your mercy, we sit and stand in your presence and say, thank you. Lord God, I, I ask for special prayer, Lord God, for the Maher family as they bury uh, a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather. Lord God, we ask you, Lord God, to give them strength, to give them courage, to fill the void that George has left, and encourage them along the way. But not only that, Lord God, to, to, to help them get over the death, but help them to realize that we all one day have to pass from this life to the next, and that we must make the choice now on where we want to spend eternity. We ask you, Lord God, to bless the Morrow family in the loss of Mother Morrow. We ask you, Lord God, to bless that family as well. Fill the void for them, realizing, Lord God, that she was a faithful servant, Lord God, and you called her home. And we ask you, Lord God, to bless that family and bless the St. Matthew Church family as well. Lord God, bless all of those who I have not mentioned, whose names are on the list, who's dealing with cancer, sickness, even praise reports, those who have... Lord God, been able to get transplant like Mr. Fincher, Lord God, 
he was able to get the liver transplanted. We ask you, Lord God, to continue to bless him and to heal his body in the name of Jesus. We ask you, Lord God, to strengthen your people. Lord God, allow your spirit to live within us and help us, Lord God, to show the world who you are through our actions and through our character. Now, Lord God, as we go into your preach word, we ask you, Lord God, to use me as your instrument to allow your spirit to speak. Lord God, to allow your spirit, Lord God, to allow your word to go out, that hearts may be touched, Lord God, that they may hear, may be helped, may be healed, and Lord God, may be saved. These are all the blessings I ask you in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As I said, I won't be before you long. Amen. Uh, we're going to, before a little bit, we're going to come out of the book of Genesis. Uh, we're going to start with the sixth chapter of Genesis. Uh, we're going to go one through eight. Then uh, we're going to go over to the seventh chapter and the first verse. Amen. That's Genesis, the sixth chapter, one through eight. And then Genesis seven and one. Amen. The first verse of the sixth chapter reads by saying, When mankind began to multiply on the earth and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of mankind were beautiful and they took any they chose as wives for themselves. And the Lord said, My spirit will not remain with mankind forever because they are corrupt. Their days will be 120 years. The Nephilim were on the earth both in days and afterward when the sons of God came to the daughters of mankind who bore children to them. They were the powerful men of old, the famous men. When the Lord saw that human wickedness was widespread on the earth and that every inclination of the human mind was nothing but evil all the time, the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth and he was deeply grieved. Then the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I created off the face of the earth together with the animals, creatures that crawl and birds of the sky. For I regret that I made them. Noah, however, found favor with the Lord. Next, we're going to the seventh chapter and the first verse, which reads by saying, Then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household. For I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. From the, that passage of scripture, that first verse in the seventh chapter, we're just going to talk to you from the subject, get on board. Get on board. Get on board. Amen. Amen. I lost you there for a minute. <laughs> amen. Amen. Get on board. The writer of this book is Moses, God's chosen servant for the deliver for the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. Moses wrote this book around 1445 BC. The key word of this book is create. The key verse of this book is Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. This book is the first of five written by Moses. These books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, together are called the Torah or the Pentateuch. According to the Illustrated Bible survey, these books take the reader back through the tunnel of time to the beginning of human existence and introduce the ultimate questions. Who are we? Where did we come from? Why are we here? They describe the first steps of the human journey to find God. Genesis is the book of beginnings, the beginning of life as we know it. From the creation of the earth, the animals and my, man, to the fall of man and the resulting mess afterwards. Hmm. 
Genesis records a great beginning. Then it records the beginning of sin, death, and destruction. Man's wickedness in Genesis is seen from God's perspective. The Lord causes the destruction of man, but yet always keeps a remnant of those who have favor with him. The Lord allows the evil men and women to persist for a time, but eventually their time of wickedness comes to an end. So in the sixth chapter of this particular book, we see God's patience with man and man's sin and wickedness is running thin. He says in the third verse of that chapter, and the Lord said, my spirit will not remain with mankind forever because they are corrupt. Their days will be 120 years. The Lord shows his disdain and hatred towards the sinful deeds of man and the evil thoughts within their hearts. Verse 4 says, the Nephilim were on the earth both in the days, in those days and afterward. When the sons of God came to the daughters of mankind who bore children to them, they were the powerful men of old, the famous men. Now when reading and studying this verse, you'll find there are two schools of thought. One, that the sons of God mentioned in this verse refer to the fallen angels who had commingled with human women and had children who were described as giants. The other uh, school of thought, number two, is this same description was with referring to the descendants of Seth commingling and marrying the descendants of Cain. But no matter what explanation you believe, the bottom line is that sin at that time had reached a fever pitch with God. In other words, the evilness, no matter which explanation of this verse is, the evil on earth at this time had become a very bad stench in the nostrils of our Lord God so bad that he gave them 120 years of grace before he destroyed the earth. The love of God was shown through him not immediately destroying them. The Lord gave them time to change. God here proves the scriptures for Psalms 103 and 8 and Psalms 145 and 8 describe God as slow to anger and great in his mercy. Here God shows that mercy even in his anger, enough to give man time and a chance to change their ways. Dr. Warren Wisby explains that God states clearly that the judgment was coming because of what humans had done. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth. Verses 5 through 8 says, When the Lord saw that human wickedness was widespread on the earth and that every inclination of the human mind was nothing but evil all the time, the Lord regretted that he had made man on the earth, and he was deeply grieved. Then the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I created off the face of the earth, together with the animals, creatures that crawl, and birds of the sky. For I regret that I made them. Noah, however, found favor with the Lord. Noah, in whom God had found favor with him and his family, Within those 120 years, according to the theologians, built the ark and declared the message of repent or face doom. The people of that time had the chance to repent and to turn back to God during the grace period. Now, in this day and time, man is in the same predicament. 
The Lord has to look down every day and see the utter disgusting and revolting sin of man. So, what is the church doing? Are we on board with the Lord's plan? Have we totally dedicated ourselves to God like Noah? Well, right now, the church is doing nothing but taking up space. Well, preacher, how can you say that? Well, if the church building looks better than the neighborhood is in, then the church is not making an impact. The people of that community are not being fed the word of God. There are churches that have all but abandoned the Lord's work and plan. They have gone on their own, preaching their own doctrine, misleading the people of God astray, allowing Satan to trick them. Many Christians have dedicated themselves to other, other things outside of the word of God. They have dedicated their lives to politics, social justice, etc. But what about the Lord? We dedicate ourselves to solutions that don't or haven't worked in years. But yet the main cure, the word of God is sitting there waiting to be opened and to be used as a weapon, to be used as a cure for this society. But many refuse to use the holy cure. I'm sure the people saw Moses preaching and building the ark, laughing at him, mocking him, calling him crazy. That's the world. They laugh at those who are saved, not realizing that they themselves are laughing their way to destruction. That's why we need not to fit in. This is why we need to stand out and be like Noah. He had favor and grace with the Lord. That's why the Lord saved Noah and his family. The world's wickedness was bad. Every evil imagination that came to their mind they did. That sad tradition still lives on today. This generation has decided to push God out in order for them to do it themselves. People are allowing their kids to decide what their gender is, even though God allowed them to be born as they are. Parents are raising their children with electronic devices and have allowed the government to usurp their authority. We have allowed Satan to creep into our homes and into the lives of our children instead of fighting him and protecting our children. Nowadays, parents refuse to mention God at all. And if they do, it is for a show and not for real. They would rather their children learn about the ills of this life rather than the Lord who is the God of all. The one who can guide our youth and our children to all truth. So God says, I will wipe mankind whom I created off the face of the earth together with the animals, creatures that crawl and birds of the sky. God here is saying, I am getting rid of this sinful generation. The Lord would not spare any person or creature from this judgment. Everything had to go. This was the Lord's verdict to his judgment of man at this time. This was the result of man's sin and rejection of God. Even in the displeasure of man's wickedness, God saw a good family that stood out, Noah and his family. This should be our example in this crazy time of man. We must be different from the crowd. We must stand out among the darkness. We must be bright in this dark world. It wasn't because Noah and his family were perfect they were far from it. 
It was because they strived to fulfill the Lord's need. They, 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 they strived to fulfill the Lord's will. They were willing to forgo the evil deeds and practices of their time to obey God. God saw them in the midst of sinful men and women. He saw them surrounded by wickedness, but yet they were willing to not partake in the, will, in the wickedness. What more of us today? We don't need to fit in with the world in order for God to see us. We don't need to rely on the world for our substance because he is with us at all times. In other words, we don't need this world for anything. All we need is the Lord God Almighty. So in verses 14 and 17 of the sixth chapter, the Lord gives instruction on how he wanted the ark to be built. The Lord wanted Noah to follow his instructions to the letter. In order for the ship to be successful in, in, in protecting his family, notice Noah didn't give God any suggestions or add-ons. He just followed the Lord's instructions. Our problem is we would have been adding to the plans God has given for us. We are always having our 10 cents to add to God's plans. We always seem to want to tweak the Lord's plans for us. We can never ever just obey the Lord's will as is. We have to make it more suitable for us. This is why we always get ourselves into deeper trouble. Obedience means following the Lord's will to the letter. It means no add-ons or suggestions, utter obedience to the Lord. So Noah is instructed by God to build the ark. The Lord gives him the blueprint or guideline to follow. This particular project would take a long time to build. As I said before, many theologians believe the ark was built during the 120 years of grace God had given for man to change. No doubt during this time of construction, Noah dealt with naysayers and evil men and women who tried to deter the man of God from his mission. I'm sure they used every tactic in the book, getting to him through his children, or through his wife. Satan was not going to let this man of God succeed if he can help it. As Satan was then, he is still the same today. Satan uses subtle and not so subtle means to trick, deter, and tempt God's people. Just like the world then, this world has rejected the message and his messengers. Noah was different from the wicked people, which means he, we must be different from the world. I know what you're thinking. Preacher, will that make me a bigger target of Satan? Yes, it will. But the Lord is with you. James 4 and 7 says, Therefore, submit to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If Satan was willing to tempt the Son of God, our Savior, he surely will come after you. This is why we must be ready. How can we be ready, preacher? Well, by studying the Word of God, by praying and having a strong relationship with God, and lastly, by having faith. You can't defeat the devil without knowledge a relationship with Christ or faith. For Satan is strong and we must be ready. That's why Paul said in Ephesians 6, 10 through 11, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand 
against the wiles of the devil. We must be prepared because if you aren't prepared, you will be defeated. In chapter 7, verse 1 through 5, God said, Then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household. For I have seen that you alone are righteous before me in this generation. You are to take with you seven pairs, a male and its female, of all the clean animals and two of the animals that are not clean, a male and its female, and the seven pairs, male and female, of the birds of the sky, in order to keep offspring alive throughout the earth. Seven days from now, I will make it rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And every living thing I made, I will wipe off the face of the earth. And Noah did everything that the Lord commanded him. The Lord here tells Noah to get his family and the animals, two of each kind, and board the ark. The Lord is letting them know that it's time to enter into the ark of safety. It is time for God to wipe the evil men and women from the face of the earth. The time of grace for man was over. The time of repentance and change was now over. The Lord had spoken and now his words were about to come to pass. It's imperative to know that God's word has and will always come to pass because God is not slack in his word. Songwriter says God said it and that settles it. This is why we must have faith like Noah. Noah didn't know the full plan of what God was going to do, but he knew to have faith and to obey. We must have faith like Abraham. When asked to sacrifice Isaac, the miracle son he had with Sarah, Abraham didn't understand what the Lord was doing, but he obeyed, and because of his obedience, the Lord provided a ram caught in the bush. We must have faith like Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel didn't know how the Lord would protect him, but his faith in God allowed him to come out of the lion's den unharmed. Even with all of the evil around us, we must have faith that the Lord is our strength. We must study to know who our enemy is and how he works. We must put on the right armor and prepare ourselves for spiritual warfare. In order to do this, you first must get on board with the Lord's plan. We must get on board the ark of safety. We don't want to be caught outside the ark when it starts to rain. When the Lord shuts the door, you can't get in and you can't get out. I want to be in that ark. Do you want to be in the ark? Get on board the ark of safety. Get on board with the mission of the Lord. Get on board the Lord's plan of salvation. In the end, it won't be water, but fire next time. Get on board. Get on board. Get on board before the fire comes. Get on board. God bless you. And may the Lord keep you. Get on board. Time is drawing nigh. The Lord is soon to come. And we as God's people must make the choice now where we want to spend eternity. And if you want to spend eternity with the Lord, then you must get on board. For the Lord will provide an ark of safety, meaning that the Lord will save us from the very presence of sin. Because once you accept him, he, he saves you from the power of sin. But when the Lord comes back, he will save you from the very presence of 
sin. So we as God's people must spread this message to those who have still not become or joined the ark of safety. We must go out and tell them to get on board. For Jesus is standing at the door of the ark with his hand out, inviting them to come on board. And we as his people must extend that invitation out to our communities, no matter what community we live in. We must extend that, 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 that invitation of welcome, the word of God, and bring them on board the ark of safety. God bless you. May the Lord keep you is our prayer. Get on board. And we as God's people must get on board with the Lord's mission. We can't separate ourselves and go on our own way. We can't. Because that causes confusion. Uh, we must understand that we must come together in unity and not uniformity. We must come together in unity. We're all different. We all have different gifts and different talents that the Lord can use for his purposes. And so that's why we must come together in unity. Because each part of the body of Christ has its purpose. And all of it is for the edification of the body of Christ and for the saving of souls and the deliverance of the captives. Amen. Amen. So we as God's people must come together and get on board with the Lord's mission. Amen. God bless you. And may the Lord keep you is our prayer. We want to thank everyone that it, that has or will tune in to this message. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Bless God. And thank all of you who have supported uh, this, this uh, ministry for the last uh, two and a half years. Amen. God has blessed me. Uh, to be able, well, almost two and a half years, amen, to, to preach and to give the message on this platform, amen. We pray that we can continue this, and uh, we pray that uh, we continue to have your support, amen, in this endeavor, amen. I thank God for this ministry because in my in my estimation, well, not in my estimation, in my, uh, in my life, I, this is the most important ministry, the most important part of my life because I care about souls. I care about those who are lost. I also care about God's people. And the best way to show that care, that care and that love is to give the message. Give the message, help, but give the message of Christ. Amen. Because that ultimately is the one thing that saves their souls. That actually is the one help that they need that can get and giving them and showing them that light can, can help and give them the guidance they need to come to Christ on their own. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And thank you again for your support. But uh, for those who have not, please join in on our uh, Facebook page, Colorblind Fellowship Church group. Uh, please uh, join in the group. Um, post any encouraging scripture or word to help all of us that are members along the way. There are times I go on and I read something that others post and it makes me feel good. It lightens my day. So please join in with the encouragement on that group. Also, please join us on uh, YouTube. All of the sermons and services here that are made here on Facebook Live will also be on YouTube. That's Colorblind Fellowship Church at YouTube. Also, uh, the services here also will be placed on Rumble. Uh, Colorblind Fellowship Church at Rumble as well. Amen. Uh, but please uh, support us in all three. The group, Colorblind Fellowship group, uh, the Colorblind Fellowship pages on YouTube and Rumble. Amen. Every sermon will be uh, posted on those and you will be able to watch anytime, any sermon. All of them will be posted on those. Amen. I'm not looking for clicks or views. I'm looking to help. Amen. And that is more important than being famous or having a name known on a social platform. What matters is the gospel of Jesus Christ, his name, to be known everywhere. Amen. Amen. God bless you. May the Lord keep you is our prayer. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord God, for your word. We thank you for your message. We pray, Lord God, that we all have heard something, said something that, some, that, that will help, guide, and give encouragement to those who need it, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to bless the names that I, I mentioned earlier, the Mahar family and the Merle family. Bless them, strengthen them, comfort them right now in the name of Jesus. All churches that are open today, Lord God, Bless pastors and leaders and churches that we all be beacons and lights in our communities. Lord God, for change won't come unless we preach the gospel. We know that the word says that the world will wax worse and worse. 
but it does not deter us from changing the lives and delivering, Lord God, the captives and to save souls with the word of God and help us to get on that mission and to continue that mission. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. These and all other blessings I ask in your son Jesus' name we pray, amen. And thank God. God bless you and may the Lord keep you is our prayer. Thank you all again for joining in uh, this Sunday, today, for Sunday Afternoon Fellowship. And uh, we pray next Sunday we'll see you again. And we pray that the Lord will watch over you during the week with traveling, merges, uh, traveling mercies to and from work and every destination. And then next Sunday we can come in and fellowship again on Sunday Afternoon Fellowship. God bless you. May the Lord keep you is our prayer. And I will see you next Sunday. I love you, and there is nothing you can do about it.